What is up, everybody? This is V3Cast, the official Voyager 3 podcast, episode 6. And uh, I just got to say, guys, what's going on tonight? We're rocking. We're rolling. We're doing our Voyager 3 thing, you know, living That's the right. life. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, I got to just, just anticipating getting to the what you what are you drinking segment. Yeah, there you go. I was just about to say too. Normally we do that first, but I have what? to put I have to put the brakes on that segment just for a second because something t- to me that's even more important is uh, I have to say first thanks and howdy to all of these new friends and fans that we've been getting since New York Ninja came out. Um, we people on our socials are asking questions and giving the thumbs up to the album and just talking about stuff on, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. So welcome and thank you. It's really cool to have a whole bunch of like new people come in. Some of these folks um, from around the world, we just had an order come in from Japan uh, over the weekend. That it just shipped out yesterday. Um, somebody ordering a CD and a shirt all the way in Japan. I think that might be the first order I remember fulfilling um, for Japan. That's that's absolutely killer. Um, that's awesome. So, yeah, so for everybody who is new to Voyager 3, we are an actual band that has other albums out, and we play shows. Uh, not so much lately, of course, like like everybody. But uh, yeah, man, and, and uh, we just did the score for New York Ninja, which happens to be our fourth full-length album. Um, but I want to take a second to tell everybody all the other records that we have, um, starting way back 2013, we put a, uh, two song, seven inch out called victory in the battle chamber. And the B side is hunted becomes hunter. Um, then in 2014, we put our debut album out called doom fortress. And then a little bit after that, the doom fortress did so well, it, it sold out like of the first uh, pressing and, and, and the color variant, which was a, a gorgeous gold color to kind of pay homage to the Voyager spacecraft's uh, golden records on there, that we did a single called um, Secret of the Ice Mountain, and we put that out for free on Bandcamp um, as a thank you to uh, everybody who had, who had bought so many copies of Doom Fortress. Um, then, in 2016, we released... Uh, our second full-length album, which was a double album called Are You Synthetic? That that did great, too. That got picked up by Light in the Attic Records for distribution, and it was in all the stores and all that kind of good stuff. Fast forward um, a year later, um, Lakeshore Records contacted us to do a song for the companion album to Rise of the Synths. So we did a track for that album called uh, Appearance of the Mysterious Traveler. Then fast forward another uh, two years, and uh, our third full-length album called War Mask came out in 2019. We did some touring for that, and uh, that album actually has a King Crimson cover uh, on it called Red, um, one of their uh, instrumental tracks. And since we're an instrumental band, we thought that was a good fit. And um, now in 2021, slash 2022 New York Ninja uh, soundtrack is now out. And as I was saying at the beginning, we are meeting so many new cool people and a bunch of other podcasts have reached out. We've been on some, we're going to be on some more in the future here coming up. So welcome. Thank you. And enjoy the ride. Thank you. We're global now. I guess so. I guess maybe so. one day, maybe one day we'll get to play Japan, you know, It'd be like our yeah. lifelong dream come yeah. true. Yeah, I would love to play Japan. That would be so cool. What if we well, went over there and we were like huge, like like Spinal Tap at you know at the end of Spinal <laughs> Tap they go they go over to Japan and they have like a whole second career. What if that was us? You never know. You never know. Like man. we'd go on before the puppet show. You mean? Oh, we'd definitely be. Uh, well, no. What Aaron is no, saying we'd is we'd be after. after the puppet show, right? We'd <laughs> I don't know. We'd headline Budokan. <laughs> Yes, we. This we, is the we first like song that. on our new album. That's right, and we play some cool uh, anime fest or something like that, yeah. and uh, we would we'd fit right in, man. Um, it's yes. important to point. It's important to point out to all these new new folks that are joining us when they're listening to it. You know, like we started this band 
making music for imaginary movies. That's sort of like the mission statement. And like the whole time we were like, one of these days we're going to do a, a, a real movie. We're going to score a real movie. But, you know, we had practiced that leading up to New York Ninja. And it just so mm -hmm. happened that New York Ninja fell into our laps at the perfect time. And, you know, the three of us consider, you know, our background in Ninja movies, like, you know, crucial to, to how well it came across and how well it's been received. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, it came from so, a spot of complete appreciation, sincerity, and uh, homage, really, you know, because all of us have seen all those movies that we talked about um, on that Blu-ray Extra interview that we did. Um, that's just something that we've always watched. Um, it's funny, the first time I ever saw the silent New York Ninja cut that we scored to, and, and, and I noticed that uh, Ninja 3, the domination, was playing at that theater. They were driving past. I was like, I can't believe this. This is so cool because I saw that on, on VHS when it was first available to rent back in 84, man. All right, so now, after that quick mention, uh, what are you drinking? Aaron, I want to know what you're drinking. Well, this is really cool. Um, my favorite band in the world is Iron Maiden. They put out a new beer. They have a few different beers. want to get the glare off there. This is called Hellcat. And um, Trooper beer is my favorite. The troop, this is a, another form of Trooper. That's my, like, my favorite beer in the world, probably just because of the band. I don't know. But I love the taste. Um, so this Hellcat is an India pale lager. They, it's not a pale ale according to them. Oh, I've never heard that like combo a, said before Indian pale lager. Yeah. They don't, I think because they're British, they don't want to get into the, the ale thing. They're, they're lager to the bone. Gotcha. I don't know, but it's good. It's really good. So I right on. All right. Can't go wrong with, with something that Iron Maiden has uh, endorsed, right? Right. Dig it. All right, Greg, what are you drinking, man? I can't compete with the Hellcat. I actually went looking for that. Like, hey, I went out today looking for it so Aaron and I could be drinking the same beer, but I couldn't find it. Oh, man, it's, it's sold out really, everywhere. No, I just don't, I only went to one store, but oh. I was trying to pull it off. But anyways, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with my backup. But I've been planning on, on this for the podcast, so I held on to one. I actually bought this a while back, but it's called Lumen, and it's by Upper Hand Brewery in the upper peninsula that is cool artwork and, uh, oh they're finished for sure i can tell by the name what's that 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 company is finished i guarantee it no you know it's uh the upper peninsula of michigan upper hand brewery no i know there's, oh, there's tons there? of fins up there in the up though seriously oh are there L okay. Lumen is a well anyways one. it's a division of bells i think the guy that started bells also started this brewery so nice that's what i'm drinking and I'm drinking it out of my let it be, let it be glass. Oh, that is top notch. Nice. See, you know what? Having a great beverage is one thing, but drinking out of a killer glass elevates it to a whole new level. And Aaron with those vintage superhero glasses and now Greg with that Beatles glass. Dang, that's good stuff, man. All right. Um, I got, uh, I kind of, ginger beer. I kind of go with this, uh, Pretty often, but uh, it's my favorite uh, monster in the white can. I, I think out of out of all the monsters, this is the one that I like the best. And there's no sugar, so look, I'm helping out my my health by by drinking this. Maybe there you go. I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> I'm sure there's, you're helping. There's totally nothing else in there that would be, do you any harm. Right? No, exactly. no, it's there's no synthetic chemicals or no. whatever things you can't pronounce on the can. There, no, there. it's good. <laughs> Tip top. But it looks cool. It looks like, you know, Secret of the Ice Mountain in your house, right. basically. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe we could do a Secret of the Ice Mountain uh, collab with that company and have like a, our, our, our artwork of uh, Raptor on the can or something. <laughs> See, it, it writes itself. I, mean, I know, man. It's crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so we got a little bit of uh, Voyager 3 news to drop on you. Um, the biggest news is that today, which is the 31st, and the podcast will probably come out a day or two after this, Mondo Death Waltz finally announced the New York Ninja soundtrack on vinyl. Uh, goes on sale on Wednesday, uh, February 
2nd, which is Groundhog's Day, at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Don't sleep on it. And it's, yeah, it's Mondo. Like- it's Mondo, so you know it's got killer art, you know. It's going to be oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah I got to give a, um, a shout-out to uh, Luke Insect, who did the artwork for the vinyl version of it. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, he did such a, a great job. It looks really cool and kind of pulpy, right, and like uh, comic-y, right? Like uh, old comics yeah. with all the dots and kind of uh, fried-out colors like that. I love that look. Um, yeah. I've actually, I, I love every piece of artwork that is in the New York Ninja orbit honestly like uh suspiria who did our artwork on our cassette and, and cd and our digital she absolutely killed it i love everything about that artwork and then you have uh the dude designs and kung fu bob who did the different pieces for the blu-ray both of those are completely different from each other and they're absolutely fantastic and now luke insects uh art that he did for the for the vinyl version they're all different and they're all fantastic so kudos to all the artists involved. Um, I hope there's more art in the future. I'd love to see another take on this somehow, some way. You never know. One of our uh, main topics that we wanted to discuss today, because I am a huge fan, and I know that you guys are also uh, big fans of, uh, of a film director whose name is Panos Cosmatos. And uh, he has done, so far... People might know Beyond the Black Rainbow and also Mandy that starred Nick Cage um, are films that Panos has done. And I love, love both of these films. Um, Beyond the Black Rainbow is kind of like a futuristic yet retro uh, new age of existence type of culture gone awry, (laughs) Uh, dystopian future, all these things. Uh, sci-fi, even a little bit of horror thrown in there um, uh, with a killer soundtrack by uh, uh, Sonoya, Sonoya Caves, Caves. Uh, yeah, or, or Jeremy Schmidt is, is, is his real name. He's also in the, in the band uh, Black Mountain. He's a keyboard player in Black Mountain who's from uh, Vancouver, Canada area. And uh, I think the soundtrack goes perfect with the color scheme and the cinematography and the writing and the vibe of that film. So that's a, just a complete perfect package in my opinion um it's amazing it's, yeah it, it, it's heady it's a little slow paced at times on purpose to kind of make you go mad and soak into that uh just crazy uh storyline that's happening so it's it's done you know purposefully and masterfully and, and just top notch um and i know i know both of you guys have seen that film yeah yeah Same i, I kind of i slept on it for a while you told me about black rainbow quite a while ago and i i just didn't know what it was all about and i had other stuff to watch but when i finally got to it i said oh hell yeah now i now i get it like why you were going so crazy for it because it's right up our alley yeah so and that was 2010 so it's been out a while now uh you know 12 years now doesn't seem that long it's crazy (laughs) it's one of those movies that when you're done watching it like you find yourself thinking about it like you know, over the next couple of weeks or whatever, like I still think about certain scenes in it to this, you know, every, every once in a while, I just think about the imagery. The imagery is so strong. I mean, that to me is like the main thing is just, well, I'm talking about beyond the black rainbow, not that Mandy isn't the, you know, sort of the same way, but beyond the black rainbow, like the imagery is so like striking and memorable. And then you, you, you sync it up with that, Sonoya Cave soundtrack, which you know is just stellar. You know, yeah. it's just a whole—it's a whole experience. It's really—it's really like sort of unlike anything I've watched. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty pretty out there and pretty pretty like it reminds me a little bit of like you know two thousand and one. You know, at the end of two thousand and one, yeah. where you don't really totally know what's going that. on, and you know, yeah, it's 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 in that bubble you know what i mean yeah it, also, it gives me um a bit of a thx 1138 vibe too sure. yeah 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 and, and here's something you guys might not know i don't know if you how much research you did on panos but uh i watched an amoeba records in my what's in my bag yeah um so anyways he he is a huge fan of poltergeist also star trek 2 the wrath of khan both 
scarred him because the tree in poltergeist yeah and then the earworms in, in star trek too <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah but here's the thing that's going to blow your mind and and i don't even know if steve knows this and this could have been my trivia question but he worked on tombstone he oh, worked well, on tombstone how old was he he was second unit or something he wasn't a director or any of that he was just on the set working on it according right. to People, imdb no no this is absolutely true i'll tell you why is because his dad directed it uh, george cosmatos so um the george cosmatos did a handful of absolutely killer films that i know that you all know first i'll give you just a, a few uh rambo first blood part two we, we all know and love that that's one of george's films awesome awesome soundtrack too I, yeah. i've been looking for that soundtrack on vinyl <laughs> jerry goldsmith yeah Goodness. that one that one is a little harder to find I, I, one of these days maybe they'll do a, you know a, a reissue of it maybe if we're lucky but uh another uh sylvester stallone driven film that he did was uh cobra uh i know that you guys like that one too awesome yeah and then of course but but then but then the the crown to to tombstone, oh, yeah. tombstone though tombstone, the three of sure. us agree that's like one of the best oh but. yeah i was just talking about tombstone last week and i and i was talking to a friend of mine and i said not only is that like the one of the best westerns ever for me but it's one of my just top 10 films of all time easily um yeah, yeah. it's a comfort movie you right. ever you're ever flipping through cable and you see tombstone on tell me you don't stop on it yeah and that's, that's, oh, that's it, it. Doesn't matter where it's at in the in the in the story because you've seen it a thousand times and it's just right. like a comfort movie to me. It's like Back to the Future, or Star Wars, or whatever. Right. I mean, and, do you uh, get a better cast? Okay, uh, Kurt Russell, no. Val Kilmer, Powers Booth, uh, Michael Bean, and Charlton Heston. What? And then there's more than that. Even you know Sam Elliott, yeah. Bill Paxton, yeah, Billy Zane. It's ridiculous. It's, just, it's a perfect movie and every line is quotable there really isn't any you know dead dialogue yeah in there's that no movie. fat there's no fat no, at all there's no fat every line is something you could say to your friends and they'll all know it's from tombstone you don't need it's not like oh there's like seven famous lines it's the whole script like pulp fiction the whole script is quotable you know yeah. so yeah and um steve but steve literally told us i'm your huckleberry not even <laughs> Two or three days ago. I think I did. It was a very week or, so, or, or last week. <laughs> yeah. It was a very significant moment um, in the life of this band that we will be <laughs> announcing what we're talking about sometime soon. So, um, but Steve's our Huckleberry, just so you know, just to give you a little bit of a heads up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. We um, quote that movie all the time. Yeah. So, so that makes complete sense. And it's not surprising at all that Panos, um, worked I just, on some capacity on Tombstone. So his uh his second film that he did in uh 2017 was called Mandy and that uh starred Nick Cage and cool enough another little two little tidbits that uh kind of will will uh, add more fun detail is that one of the producers of Mandy was uh Elijah Wood. So that that dude's always doing cool shit, you know? Yeah. It, all he sneaks in there and and he gets involved with all kinds of cool stuff and he's a big he's a, fan of horror and yep. genre stuff like that so so hats off to Elijah Wood for sure Definitely. I love Elijah Wood I love Elijah Wood's version of Maniac Yeah it was great I know it's not it's not you know it's obviously a, a stark departure from the original but Yeah it's a different animal I mean, for sure Yeah but I mean the, and again the the who did the music in that Rob Yep the music in Man in Maniac is great. The the Elijah Wood version. Yeah, for great. sure, for sure. Um, and then <laughs> the the other cool little tidbit is that it, it, both of us or all of us have seen it, right? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they cast Bill Duke in there, who was in Predator. I mean, he's been in a ton of things, but I know him best personally uh, for for his role in Predator. Uh, yeah. But they cast him in there, and he did great in his in his couple scenes. Yeah, that was um, the cool thing about Mandy is by the by the time it was you know coming, I had already seen Beyond the Black Rainbow finally. So then I was ready for Mandy, and I saw the trailer, and I thought this is going to be one of the coolest movies ever, and it was. Yeah, it lived up to the trailer. I mean, um, 
the trailer is just pure insanity. The whole movie's insanity. It's like some kind of weird fever dream fantasy that you can barely tell if these things are really happening or not. Yeah. But I, I think they are. Um, yeah. And um, the woman in it, Mandy herself, she's a super chameleon. I can't think of her name, but she's a chameleon. She had a Black Mirror episode where she had she had killed the guy when she was driving. She hit him by accident. Remember that one? And then she... Um, I didn't see that she, one. She dumped the body in the ocean. And oh, wow. she had to live with this guilt for for years and somebody witnessed her it, you know yeah anyway she's an amazing actress and she's completely different in every movie she does and um pretty otherworldly and uh but yeah the, the the whole movie is like it's like a sort of a frank frazetta painting you know like the whole movie is all these trippy colors and and um yeah, it's definitely like is amazing. fried out and saturated big time, like a lot of the cinematography yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. And the score, uh, Johan Johansson uh, just killed that score, man. It was phenomenal. And uh, that I think that was one of his absolutely last films that he did before he passed away. Um, another notable film that he did was uh, Arrival. Um I know. Yeah. I think we've all seen Arrival, and yeah. the last act of Arrival is worth even if you don't like the rest of the film, which I love the whole thing. But even if you're like lukewarm on on on, on the rest of the film, the 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 last act the, or the third act is absolutely like something you've never seen before. Absolutely mm -hmm. killer. But yeah, so great music, and uh, um. So another interesting part of it is that it's, it's like, um, absolutely ultra violent at parts you know especially you know once he kind of gets his act together and and uh after the bathroom scene and he pulls himself together <laughs> yeah uh he just wreaks havoc man it's very fun and cool to watch all that go down yeah it's it's like um it's it's the kind of movie that i think happens did did panos write it himself he um i was gonna i was gonna touch on that uh, when I talk about the next part, uh, he he has a writing partner. He wrote that with Aaron Stewart on. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's Stewart Dash A H N. But it's um, the kind of movie that, ha that 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 happens when the person writing it has zero limitations and zero um, sort of rules about what's realistic or what could happen in a normal movie or in normal life. Yeah, it's just like. Like I said, it's like a fantasy in the purest sense of like sort of a stream of consciousness. What if, what if he did this? What if he did, what if he had a, you know, a six foot long chainsaw? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and then that, that uh, sort of weird acts that he made too. Like, it's just, it's, it's like a stream of, con it's like when you really let your imagination go with zero limitations, that's Mandy. Yeah, Basically. for sure. The next tidbit I was going to mention is that uh, there's actually a third uh, thing in the works, um, which is kind of newly, uh, kind of new news, I guess. But uh, um, Guillermo del Toro is doing this kind of uh, uh, series uh, on Netflix. It's called uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. So it's kind of like an anthology, I guess, you know, multiple episodes. So the only. Like creeps out. I guess so. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I know so far, I did a little research on it and, uh, it just, it just has episode 1.5 is, uh, written by Panos and, um, that, that, uh, that Aaron guy who, who we wrote Mandy with. So they're kind of teaming up again for this episode and, uh, it stars Peter Weller. So that's pretty cool. You know, RoboCop. Yeah. Um, and that's all I know. So sometime this year, I guess is when it'll be out on Netflix and it's episode 1.5. I don't know what that means. Cause that's kind of odd, right? You would think it'd be episode six, one, two, three. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I what hope the point they didn't five. give them like 15 minutes for their episode. You're just 1.5. You just got to fit yeah. it in there and get out. Yeah. You're in between episodes. I right. don't know. No, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that it's a full thing and it's just listed weird somehow, or it's clever somehow, or I don't know, whatever we'll yeah. have to see. But, uh, that seems like a very cool combo. So if you liked, Mandy, um, it's the same writers, and of course, Panos directing as well. And I, I mean, I have high hopes for it. I, I think Panos's uh, vision for 
film and writing and vibe is untouchable. Um, I, I love all the stuff that he can concoct out of, out of his influences and uh, working with composers and cinematographers. It's, it's really great how he can reference the past and, and also create something new. Uh, it's very entertaining to watch his films, and I'm looking forward to more stuff uh, that he does. Now, I also want to make a prediction. I think you guys have heard me say this before, but I've never said it officially on something that's been recorded so that people can know, but I feel like I need to. Okay, you know how they remake films all the time, right? And most of the time, we probably wish they wouldn't, but every once in a while... You know, you get a great one out of that or someone, something that refreshes an old film and uh, you, you end up loving it or some people discover it for the first time that way and it's all good. That being said, at some point, you know that they're going to remake uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, well, Panos is your, is your man. He is the person to direct it for sure. There's nobody else that I can think of. So uh, who owns that property? Is that 20th Century Fox? I can't remember for sure. Um, but, uh, who, whoever owns the IP to that, uh, that's your director. So just, just hire him now and, and, uh, and just go with it and you'll love the results. That's just my prediction for however many years in the future that may happen. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure Panos would love that too. I agree. He's the guy, but here's the other thing about Mandy. Did you guys happen to notice like the Mandy logo for the vinyl? Like that, that movie has like a very specific tie to like, um metal i have that album and it's like a death metal logo right kind of thing if i remember right. exactly yeah and and here's the here's the other thing and this is the thing i wanted to mention um so the the weapon that nick cage uses in that movie did you guys read that it was um it was modeled after the 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 Celt the celtic frost logo oh, <laughs> oh really? no I, I didn't know that that's I'm what talking. they used as in, that's what they used as inspiration for that weapon so that's awesome a lot of a lot of old school metalhead ties into the into the Mandy movie. Yeah, I would say uh, I would say Mandy and Mad Max Fury Road are two of the most metal movies that have ever been made. Yeah, I agree with that. Probably, I mean, probably true. Fury Road had like a a post apocalyptic metal mutant band playing in the middle of the desert, really <laughs> loud. So yes, I agree. <laughs> and that one guy like stuck to the front of the truck too, right? Right. Like, the, the like just, yeah, he's just yeah. like playing guitar on the front of a truck. I love yeah. it too, man. Yeah, and that was uh, done by Junkie XL or uh, Tom uh, Holkenberg, uh, and he did an amazing job of making that have a believable, realistic sound. You know, uh, he has yeah. a couple of videos where he talks about him scoring that film, and he did an amazing job, like uh, combining, you know, sampled instruments with synthesizers and like orchestral stuff, or like he played guitar through an amp and then mangled it digitally and down tuned it or you know layered it all kinds of fun stuff like that so yeah that's nice very cool stuff and then one one last thought on mandy well panos in particular is i i was telling you guys i watched a movie that sort of reminded me of a panos movie it's called in the earth and yeah. uh if you're into that weird imagery and you know, the stuff we were talking about the end of 2001 and then obviously beyond the black rainbow is heavy with the psychedelic, you know, imagery. This movie in the earth is probably worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. Dig it, man. Yeah. I'll be checking that out. I, I, I love stuff like that where when you watch it, you're like, man, this is like covering new ground almost, you know, like that's one yeah, of the cool I, things that Panos does, I think, in his films. Like it's stuff you've never really seen before or combinations of things you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. We'll put a link to all these different films we're talking about in the description. And of course, we have to say, if you have a film that you have seen that's kind of like this kind of thing, where it's let us know in the comments because we, we like to check out new stuff and see mind-blowing stuff too, for sure. All right, our next order of business is uh, this is something that Greg texted us, and I hadn't seen it before, but when, when you texted us, Greg, I, I checked them out, and it's the, uh, the trailers. There's two trailers now uh, for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I guess it would be a sequel for sure. Um, it's kind of like the same 
formula that uh, the latest Halloween movies are doing. Um, they brought back, you know, an original cast person, the, the, in this case, the surviving uh, girl. And, uh, you know, she's in this to some capacity. The trailer shows that. From from part one. Yeah, from part one. Yep, sorry. And uh, and uh, this is a Netflix um, film. Is it a film? It is a film, right? It's not yeah, a series. Yeah, it's a film. Yeah, so there's two trailers out now to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, sequel. It doesn't have any kind of a more of a name. It's just called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? I didn't see anything else yep. uh, in there. Yeah, so it looks good. They're taking it seriously. It looks pretty brutal and uh you know dark and all the stuff that you would hope that it would be and hopefully no comedy right i don't think texas chainsaw massacre needs too much comedy yeah <laughs> well there, okay there's that so, one moment in the trailer which, yeah i was gonna you know, say there's a so i don't i don't think we're gonna be spoiling anything by talking about the trailer, the trailer. so there were you know there were a couple of things about the trailer that I'm a little iffy on, but I do love, obviously, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre because there's never been anything like it and probably never will be again. Right. But, um, you know, I've told you, I, I think I've said this in previous episodes, I'm pretty forgiving when it, comes, when it comes to horror. And I know, like, there's a lot of people out there on the Internet that are that are not psyched or super happy about what they're seeing in this trailer. But, um. <laughs> You know, again, I will I will go on record saying, man, I'm just happy to have more Texas Chainsaw Massacre content. Right. You know, right. I even busted out the shirt tonight. Nice. Nice. Leatherface on there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the way I look at it is that okay, they made it. I'll check it out, and if it's not good, I never have to watch it again. But if it's great, <clears throat> then you have this new, you know, entry in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe that you can uh, check out when you want to. So it's not that bad. It, it can't be that yeah, bad. Yeah, I mean. It's entertainment, you know, yeah. and I tend to agree with what I've read online where people are, I think it's, I think it's a little too reminiscent of what's going on with the, with the most recent Halloween thing. That's the first thing that um, I picked up on too. Yeah. I mean, that part will probably bother me, but I mean, I'm not totally against the way Leatherface looks. You know, I like the idea of him being older somehow and, you know, out there still. Right. Here's, here's actually two things. First of all, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, for me, I, I, the best horror movie of all time. The other ones, two, three, and whatever, none of those live up to the original. So yeah. if this one is better than those sequels, we're, we've gained ground. Yeah, right? well, yeah, exactly. But also, um, I saw an interview with the original woman who survived in the first movie, and she's wanted to do this, go, the, her character going back to get revenge she's wanted to do this since the beginning like yeah she was she wanted to be involved in the sequel and um and they never used her again and but her idea way back in like the 70s was to go back and get revenge and now this lady this actress who i don't think has worked in decades finally gets to go and do her thing so even though it's reminiscent of the new halloween stuff she had this idea decades ago and yeah. she finally gets to execute it and that is really really cool really. yeah yeah and there you go that's enough of a reason for me to be back on uh you know fully on board yeah and, exactly. I, and, and and aaron alluded to the comedy part and i thought actually that comedy part is is pretty creative you know what i mean like because you know that's just how kids are nowadays they think that right. they can film you on their phone and everything's going to be fine and they just have no idea what they're up against. And I think it's a pretty, pretty good social commentary. Like, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. I thought like, it was actually because, pretty funny. I thought yeah, it was like uh, old school. will kick your ass. So put them phones. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. He, he, they do the phone thing, but then the next shot is him like destroying all of them. So that kind of makes it worth it. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing that one. I don't, recall seeing a date did they post anything that you it's know about? like a couple of weeks it's like the 18th or something february oh, 18th okay. if i'm not mistaken very cool yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna watch that the minute it's available for sure and, uh, and my one last statement on this you guys are already paying for netflix so what do you i mean you got nothing to lose it's texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> yeah right. just watch right. it and stop being so damn critical man get over it yeah, and I, well, I have a feeling like what Aaron said is that there's no way it's not going to be as good as part two 
uh, and then like the one with Matthew McConaughey and uh, who was the other and star? I like part two. I, I don't I, know why I, you guys are I, being I forgot so the mean other or... star that was oh, in that your one. Name's yeah, your name's Yeah, exactly. Zellweger was in the Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, you know it's going to be better than that one. You know, right. I mean, I saw two at the theater and back then I loved it. I like it a little, a little bit less, you know, being able to compare them, but it is still good. Yes. Cause he, cause you got chop top man and he is wonderful. He's yeah. Great. He's like it's in his head yeah. with a hanger. Or whatever. Bill Mosley's yeah, character. Like, I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's great. How can you not like that? <laughs> yeah. But I like it. I'm just saying compared to the original. Well, yeah. To Aaron's point, it's a totally it's different not fair. movie. They will not make a movie like that nowadays. Um, it just no. won't. So that's its own thing. It seems like you're watching a documentary or like a or like a reality show gone wrong, like or right. something. And you know, that, it seems real. So it's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And might you know that might be lost on on newer generations too because they're so used to seeing you know found footage films and things like that. Like that's kind of become a thing. But like I remember when we were kids, when Texas Chainsaw Massacre come came out, I remember in school everybody talking about whether it was real or not. Like that yeah. was a real, like that was a real discussion. Like, no man, that's real. And you know, faces of death had the same thing. Like, right. You know, people talked about faces of death. Oh, it's, it's real or it's not real. And that was the same with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So again, I'm an old school Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. So I'm just happy to see Leatherface back and I'll take whatever I can get. And I ain't going right. to be too critical. Yeah. Right. So I'm probably, I'm probably like the worst movie critic. <laughs> because because i like it all i don't That's care right. put it on yeah. tubi and greg will watch it i'm pretty much I'm, it. I'm i'm, I'm kind of that way with superhero movies i mean i don't let anything go but i'm more forgiving with superhero movies than yeah, I am with see with other stuff, everybody's so. everybody's yeah. got their genre that they're willing to they're willing to accept That's <laughs> yeah. right. fringe fringe movies you know yeah absolutely I'm I'm pretty forgiving on on that Tubi stuff, you know, like Life Force, for example, or films of that era, um, which was Toby Hooper too. Toby Speaking Hooper, man. One, yeah, <laughs> I just watched that. Um, I think it was so just after I. just after Christmas. I, I watched that, and then I realized that I had never seen it. I thought I did, but I, I never saw that. But it has like a great cast. It's got Patrick Stewart in there. It's got you know um, a few other you know notable actors especially at that time um and i know i know this isn't a spoiler because this movie's been out forever so i think it's safe for me to say i mean by the end of it it's a full-blown zombie movie you know yeah. like yeah i mean it's totally uh, true what's not to like about that all right fellas well let's recap it we got uh a whole lot of stuff going on we wanted to say uh hello and thank you and welcome to all of uh, our new friends and fans that keep piling in because of new york ninja Speaking of New York Ninja, Mondo Death Waltz just announced the vinyl version of the soundtrack to New York Ninja. Uh, goes on sale February 2nd, which is Groundhog's Day, at 12 Wednesday. noon. That's right. 12 noon uh, Central Standard Time at mondoshop.com. And it's uh, limited edition uh, plutonium killer vinyl is what it says uh, on there. So uh, don't sleep on it because it's going to be gone real quick. I guarantee it. We have our own store, uh, V-O-Y-A-G-3Rstore.com, where we have the CD and cassette version of New York Ninja and T-shirts, buttons, pins, hats, hoodies, all kind of stuff, posters, stickers. We talked about uh, one of our favorite film directors, uh, Panos Cosmatos, who did uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow, Mandy, and the upcoming episode um, in uh, Guillermo del Toro's cabinet of curiosities um we'll have to see what he comes up with uh for that we talked about the upcoming netflix texas chainsaw massacre sequel which looks pretty good until next time uh we are voyager 3 and this is v3 cast the official voyager 3 podcast we'll see you next time